to another episode of History on the Hill. My name is Monique Sugimoto and I am the archivist and local history librarian here at the Palos Verdes Library District. We're located at the Peninsula Center Library and I am joined today with Tennessee Gardner. Tennessee is our new part-time archivist. Uh, for those of you who uh, are familiar with History on the Hill, you will probably remember Michelle. Uh, Michelle Fricke, well Michelle left us in September and we are thrilled to have Tennessee here with us. Um, and this is only Tennessee's fourth day on the job, but we will have fun nonetheless. She's all for this, just like Michelle was. <laughs> so Tennessee, how about give us a little bit of a background of, um, of your, uh, for yourself. Sure. Um, I grew up here in Palos Verdes, um, and so did my parents, so I am thrilled to absolutely be working um, to, with the community and the history here at the Palos Verdes Library District and right. with Monique. Um, and uh, I have an undergraduate degree in art history and theater, uh, where I focused in theater history, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I have my master's degree in something called heritage conservation in the School of Architecture from USC, um, which was sort of a great program to use as um, for Los Angeles as a classroom um, so it makes being here all the more special that I get to work with the community and uh, continue to work with that Los Angeles history but my community yes. my part of LA right and that's the so, fun part about it is yeah. being able to do work with your own community yeah and, and I think that um, your background with historic preservation and kind of my background in archives I mean I'm all about the records <laughs> and you're about well yes you need the records yes but also <laughs> about that preservation and the heritage conservation Let, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about that um, so heritage conservation is sort of the newer term that we're using for historic preservation because mm -hmm. the building is nice and beautiful but what makes a community and what makes it have meaning and value are the people and the places and the things that go into making that community and the people that go into making that space. So we're really talking about things like placemaking. Uh -huh. We're talking about things like community and art and how all of these things all work together. And so I actually ended up focusing a lot on um, environmental uh, factors and that sort of nexus with historic preservation and community outreach and how those things all have to work together to build a successful and a happy community. Yes, so that's yeah. excellent. Yeah. yeah, it's just a really different um, view, but we get to use the records in the same way and mm -hmm. we get to use the records to tell the story of our community, which um, yeah. I'm so glad you're here because we're, we're both on the same MO in terms of uh, you know getting that history out and, mm -hmm. and telling our community story. So exactly. it's wonderful I'm to have really you here. Excited. I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you so much for being um, with us and being game for jumping in on this just on your fourth day. Of course. <laughs> um, so on this week's episode of History on the Hill, we thought it would be fun to do one of um, Tennessee's areas, which is architecture. And because architecture is such a big part of the peninsula, that's what our topic is going to be uh, for today. All right, and we are back. What we thought we'd do today, kind of starting out our conversation about architecture, is to talk about what really defines the peninsula, which is those characteristic red tile roofs, mm -hmm. and kind of the beginning of what was called Californian architecture. Mm -hmm. um, you've heard of Californian architecture before, right? I have. Yeah. Um, I actually love Californian architecture because mm -hmm. it is really started at this thing called the Panama Exhibition down uh -huh. in San Diego okay. um, around uh, the 19-teens. Uh -huh. um, and the man really credited for California architecture is this guy named Irving Gill. Uh -huh. And Irving Gill is sort of this um, uh, gateway into a lot of the architects that we see that follow him and mm -hmm. develop into the architectures that we see and use today and that are really stylish. Uh -huh. Now, all right. kind of goes back to 
Irving Gill. Irving Gill and mm -hmm. the Panama Exhibition, mm -hmm. which is interesting because um, I know in the early days of the Palos Verdes Project, um, there was participation. Um, I don't know if it was the um, the Panama Exhibition, um, but the, definitely in New York, they mm -hmm. were um, pushing this um, you know idea of Californian architecture. But what I love about the description of Californian architecture is that it is not um, Mediterranean, it is not um, Spanish, mm -hmm. um, but it was wholly its own type of architecture, which is really interesting, I think, um, you, know, that, uh, you know, that we have that. And uh, the other part of that I, that I like, and it's more because I'm a records geek, um, but Charles Cheney, you know, mm -hmm. our first guy who was um, in city, pla city planning, mm -hmm. sent out messages to all mm -hmm. of the different chambers of commerce um, and tried to get them to adopt this terminology of Californian architecture. And I have this sheet where it includes um, all of the, you know, the, the different places that have agreed to adopt Californian architecture. Oh my gosh. Yes, it's really interesting. But I don't know so much today that people really use that term. I think we've just sort of adopted it as what's here, which was maybe uh -huh. the idea of calling it California architecture, is mm -hmm. that it just is now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we can really define it by these things that we associate with California, and we see mm -hmm. that in Irving Gill's original sort of designs, uh -huh. is the use of natural light and right. open space yeah. and things like that. And so I love that that was what was being promoted here uh -huh. on the peninsula, right. because that's what we have a lot of, and it's gorgeous. And it, it is. Yeah, it and is. so it's really taking advantage of that environment as well. Right. And so you know, you don't hear it very often, but that's you what don't. we're living in. <laughs> and that's what we're living in. And um, if you are living in Palos Verdes Estates, if you're a resident in Palos Verdes Estates, you definitely hear it there. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know if you necessarily hear the term, but the ideas mm -hmm. um, and the colors and what's acceptable mm -hmm. um, and the roof lines, all of that is pretty much um, decided mm -hmm. um, but, um, and is in charge of the Palos Verdes Homes Association, mm -hmm. which I think is a really interesting organization um, because it really really has maintained um, kind of the character of each of the different mm. neighborhoods. Um, each lot was given um, its type of architecture that it could mm. have, whether it was class one, class two, whatever it was. Um, and uh, and it's kind of perpetuated, it's kind of continued on um, that way. And I think that's what makes it important, right, is that it's, you know, these were design standards that were set down to maintain the right. feeling of a place, which is actually part of what we call the seven aspects of integrity when we talk about architecture. Tell me about the seven oh. aspects. The seven aspects. Label them all. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> well, the one I think is most important and is yeah. also the most difficult to qualify is how a place feels. And that's so much, oh, you know. interesting. Yeah, I think it's, you also have things like workmanship and, you know, the right? more sort of tangible aspects. But how a place feels is so much. And what I love about these sort of design standards for like the Home Association uh -huh. um, that have been carried on since the 20s, right, right. is that it's maintaining how Palos Verdes feels. And so even though like growing up here, things have changed here and there, but it still feels like home. It still feels like Palos right, Verdes right. when you're driving through it. And so yeah. how that works with those sort of tangible uh -huh. um, uh, design standards right. matter. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I hope new people as we are, as our community grows or new people will discover Palos Verdes, I yeah. hope they're on board for that because that's really part of what makes it really a beautiful place to live. And really unique. And I yes, think. Very. yes, that it absolutely has mm -hmm. that, um, that feel. Is that one of the official labels is feel of yes. the seven? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to have to educate myself <laughs> a little bit more here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the feel of the community, that's great. We'll yeah. have to incorporate that more into um, into our into our staff. Oh, into our lexicon. In, in, into our lexicon here at the Policy <laughs> Center, absolutely. Um, but you know, it's and it isn't to say that um, architecture, ha I mean, has been still and hasn't mm. changed. You know, over time, you only have to go back and look um, at one spot over at what's called the Douglas Cut in Palos Verdes mm -hmm. Estates, where you have a French chateau type structure. And right next to that structure, you have an all glass modern building. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, how is it that you can do that? How is it that you can have these two different structures? Mm -hmm. And you know, per the Homes Association, 
and um, you know they they're not telling you what you can have there they just want it to be good architecture mm -hmm. um, to be good architecture and to be to use materials that are good materials and like materials of its kind so it's really interesting that is very interesting yeah. and actually glass is such an interesting material when we're talking about historic structures or adding in new structures where oh, yeah. there are historic spaces we yeah, see this so. in we see this in all kinds of um, museum practice. The Netherlands is a really big pusher of this, but when you want to make an addition to a historic space, glass okay. is often the material that's used because it doesn't argue with the materials that are there. So you're not taking away from that historic structure's character, but you are able to add something on that's a little more, you know, you can see through the glass. You're not, it's not, it's literally not arguing with what's already there. So interesting. recently, I think especially in the past, oh, I don't know decade or so uh -huh. um, you know glass has been sort of this go-to uh -huh. when we're dealing with well how do we preserve something and grow something at the same time which I think also brings up an interesting conversation about adaptive reuse uh -huh. and how we're Absolutely. using our historic structures still um, on the hill or you uh -huh. know what are those um, you know how are those businesses change or how those residents change or right. like are they still being used in the same way right. can they fit our needs right are yeah. they are they even yeah. doing that um, and can um, cities you know, implement adaptive reuse mm -hmm. ordinances or, mm -hmm. you know, promoting um, that type of adaptive reuse yeah. of, of structures, which is, I, I think is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. where it gets really creative, actually. It's yeah. not a one size fits all sort of approach, right? So mm -hmm. that takes a lot of community input. Mm -hmm. How do we want this building to continue to live and use uh -huh. and things? So I think that's really interesting. I love it. That's yeah. it. We, we <laughs> have that the, what was that, the feel of the building? And mm -hmm. then there isn't an argument. Is that what you said? Yeah. There wasn't an argument between the old, and, I mean, glass yeah, minimizes glass. the argument. Yeah. Or is that the word you used? <gasps> We can use that word. What, what did you use? Because what you used it was good. It doesn't argue with the it character. Does, it doesn't argue with yeah. the character. No, I just, I just like the, the visual of the glass arguing with the building <laughs> or not. Um, so that's a that's yeah. a really interesting one. Okay, those are two two um, terms that I can we can now use. Just our, architecture. Just things. architecture. Things <laughs> that you are teaching me. Yeah. <laughs> when we get into um, modern architecture, I know this is an area that you really like as well. Tell us what your, your your thoughts about the modern architecture here on the peninsula. And I know that's a big question. Yeah. Well, when we say modern, I feel yeah. like for people who don't know, we're not talking about the newest thing that was built yesterday. Oh, right. Modern right. is a set a uh, period of time. I'm sure everyone is very interested in mid-century modern right now as a design style. It's very that's popular, right. yep. which is sort of interesting. Yep. <laughs> um, so that's when we're talking about is really, um, you know, 1949, um, right. I guess, through the early the 70s. Early 70s, yeah. Yeah, like is, is modern. Mm -hmm. um, so really the 1960s is the heart of that. And mm -hmm. you get the development of a ranch style home, mm -hmm. right? And this is all coming up. I, I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with post-World War II, people yep. are coming home we get the birth of really suburbia right right and people are looking for homes and a yes. lot my um, community that I grew up in is one of those homes. right so is mine we <laughs> yeah. both live on the peninsula so. yeah I live in a, my parents I grew up in a ranch style home yes. <laughs> in yes. suburbia and it was great it was beautiful right. and it lots did, of PV stone yes I'm lots, sure. of, lots of PV stone, PV stone. Yep. Um, you know every house had a view you yes. know kind yes. of and that was part of the appeal I think of living here mm -hmm. um, but these modern style homes and they were bringing in modern architects yes. to come in and do this and everyone I felt like had um, sort of a say in Palos Verdes because it was a moment of, of change uh -huh. and doing this sort of new thing. Yes. And well, so they get the just, opportunity. <laughs> let's just rattle off some of those architects, though, that are coming in. Uh, Paul Williams, Paul first Williams, and foremost. Yeah, Paul yeah. Williams. We get Paul Williams. We get um, the um, Rolling Hills Estates over right. in Sea um, not Sea View. Is it Seaview? Um, yeah, I think yeah, it is. Sea a, yeah, Seaview. Sorry. Not Sea Ranch. That's a yeah, whole yeah. other conversation. Yeah, yeah, that's another <laughs> so, one. So we get Paul Williams. Um, we Neutra. Get no, Neutra. Yes, Neutra. <laughs> Everyone should go look up Neutra. Yes. Um, so, right. um, and then. Um, you know, the Neutra, who works a lot with Schindler, uh -huh. um, you know, so we have a, uh, Neutra, who did Palos Verdes High School, High school which right? is still being used today, effectively, I might add. Yes, it's and gorgeous. not changed. I and mean, it changed. is basically as it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then you get um, Quincy Jones, a Quincy oh, Jones. Jones. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so that's sort of been my interesting bit here, I guess, or the thing that I've been love learning about so right. far, um, you know, during my first sort of time Four days. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four days. First. I was about to say a week, but I can't. <laughs> you so. can't say a week because it hasn't even been a week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what diving are, in. Yes, you're just diving in. <laughs> um, but one of the things that, um, that we have here in our collection, and, and you will become very familiar with this collection because it's actually a popular collection. Oh, I'm sure. Um, it's this collection on um, uh, on different brochures um, for sales on the peninsula. And this one was for Mesa Palos Verdes. You know, I love these too because it's so much like when the hill was first being developed with Vanderlip and the uh, Olmstead actually, yeah. com uh, right. corporation, um, the Olmstead brothers. Um, you know, they had the same idea, didn't uh -huh. they, right? Yes. Oh, they absolutely had the same idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, of, of you know, what type of architecture should should be here, yes. Mm -hmm. But when we get into this period, like the one that you're talking about with mid-century modern, you know, we're talking about that indoor-outdoor space, mm -hmm. um, a lot of glass, coming, a lot of glass, the, being able to, you know, have your um, areas where people can come over. Natural materials, Natural which materials. I love that you mentioned PV stone earlier. Right. I think that's so important, and I'm seeing that kind of get lost sometimes, even in our local businesses that have those storefronts uh -huh. and things and stores change, but that was such an important part of mid-century modern architecture here yes. in Palos Verdes. And I have to admit, we just redid our downstairs room, and it had, well, I know, no, no, let's hear me out. We have this massive fireplace at PV Stone, which mm -hmm. divides our um, living room and the kitchen dining room area, mm -hmm. but that continued downstairs, and it wasn't that really, um, I mean, it was just kind of big rocks, Yeah. and it was not the prettiest, and maybe oh. I shouldn't mention that, but, but we just wanted to have a pretty fireplace, so we kind of minimized the, um, let us just say we minimized. We minimized. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a very nice way. We that. just minimized the stone a little bit, but we did bring out the wood, well, the wood beams across. Well, there's that. There's that, exactly, so we could keep that. focus yes. on that. Yes. <laughs> Forgive me for that. <laughs> yes, but when we get into, uh, the reason why I wanted to get back to mid-century modern and, um, and Quincy Jones is because he was the one that did this library with the original iteration of the library. And uh, I mean, by all accounts, it was a spectacular building, and the photographs of the building at that time were just amazing. Gorgeous. My mom remembers that library. Oh, she does? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my and gosh. she just remembered how beautiful it was, and part of the reason yeah. she loved coming to the library is because she had such a beautiful space to be in the library. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I think that's what this building actually continues to do. I uh -huh. have, this was my version of the library. Well, this was your version of the library. <laughs> yeah. so you, this, is the, this was your home library when you were growing this up. This is my home library oh, growing nice. up. Yeah, yeah, and so I have my favorite nooks and corners, but she had the same thing for that A. Quincy Jones library also. Right. And he just used that open space, space. so well. The kid, does, um, how old, oh, I don't want to ask your mom's age, but. Sorry, um, mom. Did she, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> did she, um, does she remember the, um, the, the theater, the kids theater mm -hmm. area oh, where yeah. they did story hour? Mm -hmm. Oh, because we have some beautiful pictures of that and it just looks like a wonderful um, I would place. love to pull those and just look at them. Oh, we definitely will. We'll yeah. I'll, I'll show you where those are. Cause it's one of the big part of our collection. <laughs> so, but getting back to that, yeah. um, we have these two models um, when the buildings were being created. So we have the original A. Quincy Jones model, mm -hmm. um, which has seen it's some better days. Um, okay. And we also have the remodel of this building in the 1990s. And um, we have been teasing each other about this. Um, you know, you have to do a lot of learning how the local history center works, <laughs> and it can be a little bit boring. So ah. we need to have a little bit of a carrot project. So one of um, Tennessee's carrots project, carrot projects, is to actually um, repair the two models that we have, and I think that'll be kind of a fun. Project. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting to use those skills. So in mm -hmm. archival practice and you know uh -huh. certainly in various parts of my education, you know, it's something that you learn of how to handle these models and materials because they're part of the history of the site and they can yes. tell you so much. Yes. Including, you know, the artistic hand of the architect and uh -huh. like what they are thinking of, you know, that's it's like concept art really. Yes. Um, and it's its whole own sort of practice. And so mm -hmm. I think it's really great that the library um, 
everyone has maintained those and that we get to continue to, you know, let yes. them live and see another day. But we're going to let them see another day and <laughs> you, will be, to and you <laughs> will be able to repair them so that they can see another day. Mm -hmm. So that'll be, um, I think it'll be a good project I think um, to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really and we have, we have our lab right next door, which is where the models are kept. Mm -hmm. So um, we can go and take a look at those. Why don't we take this back over to our table, okay. right over there. Take it out of its box. There we go. There we go. We can take it and turn this over and put it on top. And then we have There you go. So see all of this little stuff in here is gonna be repaired. Mm hmm Little fixes, things like that. Right. Dusting. See how dusting. The, this needs to just, it's kind of crinkling and falling apart. The little, Stacks. these little things need to be put back on. Does that mean Godzilla got it? Yeah. So this is, when we talk to, we'll, we'll, we'll go back in. So that's the first one. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's this building? Yes, as it is now. Like I said, I should, I gotta find This is the original one. The one that everybody loves and this thinks it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit tough, I think. I can see a couple, is there a couple of people up there? Yeah, yeah there are a couple of people. Yes, and a red, and a red uh, old car. Yes, the driveway was on the other side. Mm -hmm. From Silver Spur. Uh, no, from Deep Valley. Oh. But right now it's on this side. It was swapped. Oh, it's on the other side. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, it was on a different, which is so interesting. That's so disorienting. Yeah. <laughs> and Alrighty, so we are back from seeing the models. So tell me, Tennessee, do you think it's going to be a fun project? I think it's going to be great. I'm <laughs> really, good. really excited. I think it's going to be your first carrot project. <laughs> I'm so glad you are interested in taking care of that because it really needs it, it needs some care. I'm I'm very interested. That's okay. what I kind of view our job is. It's like taking care of That's things. That's what we do. Right? That's so, exactly what we do. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, the other thing that I think is interesting about the peninsula is how many um, designated sites we have here mm. on the peninsula. And it's not just federally designated sites, but also um, sites uh, with the state of California. Mm -hmm. um, so whether they're points of interest or um, I can't remember the other um, terminology, but it's really nice that we have um, those, or through the historical society that we have sites that are, have been designated. I mean, our most recent one, I think, from just a few weeks ago is the Wayfarers Chapel, which is amazing. Who doesn't love Wayfarers Chapel? <laughs> Who doesn't love Wayfarers Chapel? And I have to say, I just put online um, the oral history that we had with Lloyd Wright um, and his description of the Redwood Forest um, when he went in to design this thing is really amazing. I mean, it's a little bit wow. difficult to listen to, um, but just to hear that piece, that is the most memorable thing um, in my mind. I can't wait to listen to oh, this. Yeah. I haven't heard those before. Oh, yeah, yeah, and they're online now. Oh, fantastic, yep. yeah. Well, I, that online repository you've made is like incredible, um, completely accessible. And we're gonna be changing that. We are in the middle of changing that. We'll have to do our next um, episode of History on the Hill <laughs> um, when we migrate to the new site because that's going to be a fabulous site for the community to interact with. Mm -hmm. um, so when from Wayfarers, I think the, the, uh, the next most recent one is the California um, designated point of interest for Hitano Farms, mm -hmm. which we have done um, on this before. I think mm -hmm. we've mentioned that. Um, and before that, it is the Malaga, Go Malaga Cove Plaza Historic District, and that is on the National Register. Mm -hmm. And that is not just one building, but an entire area. So it's right. all of Malaga Cove with the buildings in the plaza, the green space, and even including the post office over there, the right. post office buildings, yeah. Well, that's what I love actually, a historic, having a historic district in our community is huge. Huge, And so thank a, you. A historic, <laughs> literally, yes. a historic district is not just one building, right? Like uh, Wayfarer's Chapel well, is a right. single, like that's one, in, one site. A historic district is when you have enough 
um, structures, buildings uh, that are of contributing character. Yes. Uh, and so we're so lucky that we have Malaga Cove. And think about how different that place would be if Without any it. of those pieces were missing. Right. And so that's sort of kind of what um, composites a historic district and right. we're so lucky to have, to have that. that. <laughs> yes. And if you are at Malaga Cove and you haven't noticed this already, stand in the middle of the plaza, go stand with Neptune and just look around. Yes, visualize it. <laughs> um, you can see all of the arcades mm -hmm. um, from the building that's to the left of um, Neptune in front of Neptune or behind mm -hmm. Neptune uh, and also to the right. They all have that characteristic um, arcade, um, mm -hmm. you know, the arcade yeah. um, thing. And you really don't notice it until you've read the application <laughs> <laughs> or if you're interested in architecture. Right. Um, because then you can see the, the arcade, but that's what it was consistently built that way from the 20s up to the 60s. I right. mean, that, that is really amazing. Like uh, like materials, but similar like, but different. Right. That's how they do it. And right here, right and here right. in our own little palace area. I know, <laughs> and that was, you know, the Olmsted Plaza too. Which right. is, the Olmsteads are a huge deal. Yes. So that whole area is so yes. layered and packed and continues to sort of grow its its significance, yes. I think. And then yes. what's, is, Point Vicente is designated too, isn't it? Point Vicente it? Lighthouse is also designated. Yeah. So is La Venta by the Historical Society. Oh, so Laventa. Yes. So I think what we'll do is wrap it up here for today. We can talk architecture all day long. All day. Yes, and we'll do that on another episode. But thank you so much for joining us today on History on the Hill, and we look forward to seeing you again. Tennessee, welcome on board. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. All righty. Yeah. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>